ladies, it's me, The Natural Cole, your how-to resource for natural hair. And I have a special video for you guys today. But before we jump into the video, go ahead and if you don't mind, click the subscribe button and be sure to turn on the bell notification so you'll know when I upload a new video. So, I want to ask you guys a few questions. Have you ever heard of a hair and scalp analysis? Do you know someone who's had a scalp and hair analysis done? And no, this is not something that you have to necessarily go to the dermatologist to have done. Or maybe you're thinking like, Cole, I have no clue what you're talking about, okay? <laughs> if not, trust me, you're watching the right video. Guys, in this video, you are going to be able to see someone's scalp up close you're gonna see what open hair follicles look like you're gonna see what closed hair follicles look like you're gonna be able to see what dry scalp looks like you're gonna be able to see a single strand not up close a split in up close I mean all of that by using a special machine it's not a machine that I have but I'll tell you how I came across this service I was scrolling Instagram one day and I came across a hairstylist here in North Dallas who she had something on her Instagram page about hair and scalp analysis and I had never seen this done before. So I reached out to her and I introduced myself and I told her that I was very interested and curious about this service that she provides called a hair and scalp analysis. So I asked her if we could meet up for coffee. And we met up for coffee on a Sunday, and I learned so much. And I asked her, I said, what about if I come to your location, and if I bring a hair model, will you do a demo and explain what a hair and a scalp analysis is, what a hair and scalp analysis is? And she was like, sure. So, guys, that's exactly what we did. I got a chance to go to her salon, um, record her doing a live hair and scalp analysis, and I want to say, before we jump into this, go get a notepad. Get a notepad, grab your lap laptop, grab an iPad, or open up the notes on your phone. Open up the notes app because you are really going to want to take notes because she is going to explain a lot of things and especially why you need to be shampooing your hair. You guys know this is something I talk about all the time. Not only is she going to talk about why you need to shampoo, she's also going to explain and show you why black Jamaican castor oil is not the best oil to use on our hair and scalp. She's going to explain to you how using um, Jamaican black castor oil can possibly stunt your hair growth and cause your hair to grow at a lower speed or slower rate. And we've all been thinking that what Jamaican black castor oil or black Jamaican castor oil, whichever one you want to call it, is what we need when we're trying to hair our, when we want to grow our hair back. But guys, that's not the case. So I'm going to quit talking and we're going to go ahead and jump into this video. And once the video is over, I'll come back. I'll recap a few things, and we're going to have a conversation about this in the comments. What's up, everyone? My name is Josie B, and I am a professional stylist and natural hair coach located here in North Dallas, Texas. I have over five years of experience working with natural and textured hair. Today, I'm going to share with you one of my signature services, which is a hair and scalp reading. A hair and scalp reading is pretty much a microscopic, deep down, x-ray type look at your hair and scalp. With this technology, it allows me to show you more than what I can see with my human eye. It pretty much like takes the guesswork out of natural hair. So with my machine, which is like a microscope, it zooms in times 200 into your hair and scalp. And I'm able to see your follicles. I'm able to see split ends. I'm able to see tri-scalp. I'm able to see inflammation. I'm able to see so much. 
So by me being able to show you just what's going on with your hair, we can actually dive right into it and start to heal and reverse the effects of what's going on. So instead of guessing all the time about your hair, how about I show you what's going on with your hair? So today I have a client and I'm gonna actually show you her hair and scalp and how the technology works. All right, so we're gonna go right into the scalp analysis. So I'm gonna take a look at your scalp first. I always start the scalp and then I move my way um, from your scalp down to your strand. All right, so you say you have dry scalp. So, for one, first question is, when was the last time you shampooed your hair? All right, so you say it's been two weeks since you shampooed, right? Yes. All right, and when was the last time you put product in your hair? Yesterday. Yesterday. All right, so this could either be product or it could actually be dry scalp. So, um, now it's a matter of us figuring out which one it is. So, you said you haven't put product in your hair in how long? In I rubbed some, like, oil on it yesterday. Okay, so on your hair or your scalp? On my hair. On your hair, okay. Cause, hair yeah, because y'all can tell your scalp, I don't see any type of oil or lubrication on your scalp, which would let me know that maybe dry scalp, because usually the normal scalp will have like a sheen to it. Your natural sebum from your scalp will be present. I don't really see any type of sheen on your scalp. So these flakes are leading me to believe that it is dry scalp. Um, so with that being said, um, from as many flakes as I see. We wanna start off with some sort of scalp exfoliation for starters, just to kind of get some of the build up off. And then from there, figuring out why your scalp is so dry and how we can fix that internally as well as externally. A lot of people get dandruff and dry scalp confused. Dandruff and dry scalp are two different things. A lot of people don't know that dandruff is actually like a fungus. Um, so that's why you have to buy like specialized shampoos and medicated shampoos to treat it. Dry scalp is just simply a scalp that is, um, uh, that has no moisture uh, for whatever reason. So the good thing about that is that we can fix that um, without having to do too many uh, like medicated treatments or having to refer you to a dermatologist, at least at this point. It doesn't look like anything that um, needs any medical attention. So that, that's the good thing. All right, so like I was saying, if you notice how your those flakes are like surrounding your hair follicles, it's almost as if the follicles is like, give me something, give me something. So now it's starting to produce, yes, it's right there, those dry flakes. Now, um, your follicles themselves actually don't look bad, and I'm going to actually show you a comparison to how they're supposed to look and how they shouldn't look. So hold this right here. All right, so these little places where your hair are coming out those are your follicles okay so your follicles are little holes okay so what happens is with an open follicle like this you're actually able your hair is supposed to be able to push its way out so there's nothing surrounding it there's no oil there's no buildup there's no nothing so the hair is able to just shoot its way out but what happens is people have clogged follicles a clogged follicle will look like this so it's actually closed and the hair has to force its way through. So if you take a look at yours, you can actually kind of see the little openings aside from the, the dry stuff. You can't really see, but you can kind of see the whole, the opening area around your scalp. So I'm gonna show you a comparison. All right, so see how I was saying that opening right there? Mm -hmm. That's how a open, clean, good follicle looks. On the other hand, let's go back to yours. So now, that's not to say all your follicles are clogged and all of them aren't. They're different on different parts of the scalp. Usually, more more follicles are clogged around the perimeter where we put like a lot of our product, the edge controls and all that kind of stuff like that. Usually it's um, more clean in the back because that's the area we kind of skip the most of. Um, so with us being in the middle of your head, I actually can see two different types of follicles. Like here, you don't see that hole, right? But kind of here, you can see a little bit more of that opening and even a little bit right here. Here, you can't really see it. Um, here you can't, here you can't. So with that being said, we need to make sure that you are exfoliating and cleaning your scalp on a regular basis. Um, how often do you clean or exfoliate your scalp? Like every two weeks. Every two weeks. So you are, are you actually using an exfoliator or are you just using the shampoo? Are you using the clarifying shampoo, moisturizing shampoo? Just a, a shampoo, huh? Yeah, sometimes <laughs> I have a moisturizer, sometimes conditioner. 
Okay, so this is where um, scalp shampoos and things that are formulated um, for your scalp come into play. Um, and that's because what they're going to do, they're going to balance your scalp out for once. For one, and number two, they're going to actually help clean out those follicles. Now, the same way you exfoliate your skin, you know how they say, oh, you exfoliate, you get the dead skin cells off, uh, freeze up your pores and stuff like that. It's the same thing with your scalp. A lot of people don't realize that your skin, um, that your scalp is an extension of your skin. So this skin on your forehead ain't nothing but the same thing. It's just extended into your scalp, and now hair, hair grows from there. So the same way that you're going to take care of your skin, moisturize, cleanse, exfoliate, it's the same thing you're going to do with your scalp. So therefore, if you're not exfoliating your scalp on a regular basis, then yes. Think about all the pro products we use as naturals. We want to use butters and all the other kind of weird stuff. Um, but what's happening is the more you're using them without properly cleaning it off, you're creating just a buildup and you're suffocating those follicles. And after time, what happens is if your follicles aren't cleaned and maintained during that time, all that buildup is just, you know, layering on top, layering on top, layering on top. So your follicles can't breathe. Therefore, you have stunted, stunted hair growth or some people even get thinning and hair loss because, again, once those follicles suffocate um, to a certain extent, you can't bring them back. So I'm going to show you the follicles that are open. So, like, that one is slightly open. You can kind of see the opening surrounding the hair that's coming out of the scalp. But a majority of these in this area are are clogged. Like this one, even you can see how this little hair right here, which is a new hair, you can see how thick the rest of the strands are compared to this really fine hair. Um, the finer hairs that you see are new hairs. So, at least we know you have some hair growth. Um, but with these clogged follicles, this one is kind of open. You can, you know, you can see inside of their follicle. But what happens is the follicles are supposed to be open. There, that means your hair is able to freely, um, you know, work in its environment because that's how your follicles should be. But what happens is after using all the products over time, especially the heavier products and the heavier oils that people like to use on their scalp, grease. First of all, it's a no-no. We're not going to talk about that. But the first runner-up is going to be Jamaican black castor oil because, for one, that oil is so thick and it's non-penetrating. Those molecules are actually bigger than the follicles. So what happens is when you actually put that stuff on your scalp, it's just sitting there. It's really not doing anything because it's not absorbing into the scalp. It's absorbing into those follicles, and that's not what you want. After time, after the oil continues to go inside of those follicles and clog those follicles up, it makes it harder for your hair to actually do its thing. It's supposed to just naturally and freely grow. But we're putting things inside of our follicles and on our scalp that is causing our scalp and follicles to slow down because they're having to work through so much gunk, so much buildup, so much um, old skin, so much old product, so much everything. So it's like that's why you have to make sure that you are properly cleaning your scalp or else you're gonna get those um, thinning spots, you're gonna get slow hair growth and things that you don't desire. So with that being said, that's why it's good to be able to look at your scalp like this to kind of see what areas need the most attention. Um, particularly, we can tell this area does because we don't see too many um, open follicles, but that's not a lost cause. There's nothing that um, a constant uh, regimen um, tending to your scalp, scalp exfoliations and things like that. That'll help balance your scalp and open your follicles up so your hair can, um, you know, grow at its optimum rate. I can see that you have some ends that have started to wear away. So you can see how it's really pointy at the end. So usually it's supposed to have like a blunt look, especially if you had, you know, like a fresh trim or um, something like that. But in this case, this is really pointy, which lets me know that pieces and fragments of your hair are starting to wear away so this could have used could have been a split in so one of the pieces has you know come off and now it's just going to continue to you know wear its way down and that's the importance of trims people don't understand and i can actually show you better with this machine why trims are so important because i'm pretty sure this was a split in so what happened was that the other piece of this came off so now as this gets weaker, another layer is going to come off. And as it continues to come off, it's going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. And that's why a lot of naturals don't retain length. We're not going to say your hair doesn't grow, but you're not retaining the length because the ends are not maintained. So over here, I'm going to show you something else. This brown, you can kind of see like a brown hue on that. That represents damaged or old hair. Usually you'll see more brown towards the end of the strands because that's the older part of the hair. 
there's a split end right there you can see like i was explaining earlier you see how it's really pointy right here so what's happening is that piece is going to eventually come off or this piece whichever one so uh, eventually all this is going to break off and it's going to continue it's like a it's like a pantyhose if you get a run you know what i'm saying so you can put the little what they do put the fingernail polish on to make it stop but after a while once it wears off it's going to continue to split its way up all right and that's the same thing it's going to do with the split end um I had a knot up there, but I moved, so it went away. But, again, you can see where your hair is starting to split in all those different areas. Okay? So, that's the importance of making sure that you keep everything trimmed. Because if you don't, you're gonna your hair is going to get shorter, and most of us desire longer hair. Um, and also, the health of your hair is compromised because, again, once those split ends start to mingle and mix with each other, you're going to get more single-strand knots those single strand knots are going to break you're going to have more shedding more breakage and that's not fun that's what we're trying to eliminate right so with that being said we're able to see what's going on and how we can directly go in and treat the areas that need the most attention this procedure is really good to kind of understand what's really going on with your hair because a lot of times we guess and we don't get the results we want we want because we are guessing so now that you have something to actually show you what's going on you can take the guesswork out and go straight to the results so here we have one of the lovely, psych, one of the most dreaded things as a natural are those single strand knots. They're really, really annoying. But what happens with those single strand knots, you can see, it's not even all the way formed because it's still loose. But what happens is once that knot gets tighter, it creates like a, a breaking point, literally. Um, so once that knot gets solidified and it tightens, whatever is behind that knot is eventually going to break. So again, that's why it's so important to make sure that you maintain um, your trims because the split ends a lot of time will cause knots and also just the curly nature of your hair is going to cause knots as well. So that's why keeping your hair moisturized and keeping everything balanced and on an even playing field will help ensure that you eliminate a lot of the things that come along with natural hair. Um, and the goal is to eliminate all breakage periods. So all the knots, all the split ends, all the dryness, all those things, um, give you breakage so we want to start eliminating that so this is actually showing me where you know you have a knot now some people have knots in um a majority like a, a main part of their hair like for me i have a lot of knots in the back of my hair and for me i know that's because i pull my hair up a lot and a lot of us do so usually we will have a lot of knots in the back and then you gotta think about it if the knots and the breakage is in the back, that's taken away from length. So, again, we want to make sure that we keep all of that balanced and make sure that your trims are performed on the regular by a professional. How often should you get a trim? My professional recommendation is um, anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks. A lot of people think trimming is like, ugh, it's simply maintenance. The same way you mow your grass you know so that it doesn't get out of control it's just maintenance it's not a haircut we're not taking away your hair it's just simply maintenance so every eight to twelve weeks you should be you should be scheduling um you know your regular trim so ladies what do you think about the information that you just saw in this video i mean what what do you think what do you really think about what you just saw Leave a comment below so we can talk about it. Guys, when I saw up close, dry scalp, open follicles, split ends, single strand knot that was getting ready to happen, I was like, wow, this is what we cannot see with the human eye. And yes, you can go to the hair salon and you can get your hair done, but they can't see that close up either. So to be able to go somewhere and have a service like this done to know exactly what you need to do to take care of your hair. Like Josie said, it takes the guesswork out of trying to figure out what to do because you can you will know exactly what you need to do. And she can help. Um, she can suggest and help you create a regimen to keep your hair and your scalp moisturized. I mean, I was blown away. But listen. Did you guys hear what she said about the Jamaican black castor oil? I'm going to pause for a second. <laughs> Did you hear what she said about the um, Jamaican black castor oil? 
Guys, that oil is really too thick to be using on our hair. You saw her explain when the hair follicle is open, that oil is so thick, it cannot absorb into the scalp and the hair. And it just sits there. And it'll clog up the hair follicles, meaning it's going to stunt your hair growth. And it's going to slow the speed um, of your hair growth down. Now, granted, we've all used um, black Jamaican castor oil. That's what we see all over the Internet saying this is what you need to use to help your hair grow back. But ladies, do we really need to be using that? Based off of what you just saw in this video, do we really need to be using that on our hair and our scalp like that? Now, I've used it. A lot of you guys watching have used it. And listen, when we first went natural, when natural hit the scene, what, early um, 2010, 2011, 2012, or 2009, we were taking advice from people who looked like us. And if they said use it, we were using it. Because let's be real, there were not a lot of professional stylists talking about natural hair when it first hit or blew up or got popular. It wasn't. So we were just following advice off of what we saw on the internet. And that's one thing I tried to explain to a lot of professional stylists. I'm like, you can't get upset with us or get mad at YouTubers because we're doing all this crazy stuff to our hair. We were only doing what we saw other people doing. But now we know better because now professionals are coming out. They're becoming educated. They're providing services like this service that Josie is providing to help us take care of our natural hair. And there are products on the market that are now formulated and designed for us to take care of our natural hair and scalp. Another thing, guys, now since you've seen this video, please start washing your hair. Co-washing is not the best option. There are products on the market that will help to cleanse the hair and moisturize it at the same time without stripping the hair of its natural oils. I talk about it all the time. So ladies, I'm, I'm not going to preach because I could preach all day about this, especially since I've seen this up close. So let's have a conversation about this because I really want to talk about this in the comments. Share this video with anyone that you know. They need to know about this service. They need to know, especially if they live here in Dallas, Texas, in the North Dallas area, that this is a service that they can go and have done and know exactly what they need to do with their hair. Ladies, once again, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was informational. And I hope you learned something that you can take with you. Until next time, ladies, this is The Natural Cole, your how-to resource for natural hair.